Hello Internet, this is another video in my Warm the Pacific tutorial series. In this video I'll talk a little bit about logistics and planning. These are cornerstones of running an effective war, and while I'm generally awful at it, I'll share a few tips that have helped me at least become better than hopeless. I'll also complain about the interface with regards to supplies and things like that. I'll start, however, by talking about how supplies and logistics affect gameplay and the dice rolls um, associated therein. So the first question you might be asking is, what is a point of supply? Uh, a point of supply represents one ton of supplies. It basically represents things like, well, supplies represent things like food, ammo, spare parts, aviation fuel, duct tape, and so on. Uh, you can tell how much supply is available at a base just by hovering over. And in the mouse, in the pop-up there, you see um, Mersing has zero points of supply. That's okay because there's no unit station there. Um, Singapore has 20 points of supply, which is bad because I have huge amounts of units and all the supplies are going to the units, and even then it's not quite enough, as these uh, red numbers indicate. A uh, base that's in good shape in supply is Palimbang. Uh, it's got over 300,000 tons of supply present, which is good because we have a bunch of support units here, some uh, a pretty hefty garrison, a bunch of air units, things like that. Um, so the next question is how do you get supply? Uh, there are a couple ways. Um, I guess the one that affects strategic thinking is industry centers. Some bases have, and it's actually quite few bases, um, at least in the points of contention on the map, um, actually have industry centers. I'll show one off. Singapore, why not? Well, actually, I'll tell you why not, because it's damaged. Let's go up to Rangoon. Uh, Rangoon, you see in the uh, pop-up, there's um, resor things like manpower, resources, refinery, and light industry listed in the pop-up. Um, manpower doesn't really affect the allies, so ignore it. Resources are generally never a limiting factor, so ignore it. But refinery and light in industry are important for... Uh, generating supply. Um, each point of light industry can, assuming it has resources available to it, takes resources in it as input and outputs um, one point of light industry outputs one ton of supply per day. So here at Rangoon, 40 points of light industry, that's 40 tons of supply per day. Uh, refineries also produce, um, I think, one point of supply per, uh, per day, I think, each point. Um, it's kind of a weirder thing because uh, refineries also produce fuel and it takes oil as its input. Um, let's see, a place like Bangkok has heavy industry as well and that produces, uh, according to the manual, two points of supply per day but it takes a little bit more in the way of resources and also takes a point of fuel uh, as inputs but it generates supply twice as quickly. Um, so that's uh, that's how you get supply from industry centers. Um, Western countries generally have plenty of these, more than you'll ever really need. Uh, let's take a look at the US for example. San Francisco's got like 34 million tons of supply hanging out at it. Uh, LA's got like 7 million, so lots of stuff pooling there. Sydney, um, I'm doing a little bit better with Sydney. It's got under a million, but it's got like 850,000. Um, it's a lot lower than the U.S. West Coast because I've been using that to ferry supplies to places like Port Moresby, Rabaul, uh, the Solomons, and Luganville. Um, also, you can accrue supplies at off-map bases. Cape Town, for example, has over 4 million tons of supply just hanging out at it. Um, Mombasa apparently doesn't really get that much supply automatically. Uh, Aden's got a bunch. Um, Abadan doesn't have much supply, but it's got a ton of fuel because it's uh, that's the Middle East and it's making tons of fuel. And um, likewise, the Panama Canal. So yeah, a lot of supplies go into the Allies' pools at these off ba off base locations. Um, and you gotta ship it from there to places that don't produce it, like um, so from Australia to 
you know, New Guinea and the Solomon Islands. Uh, from the U.S. to uh, Pearl Harbor. Actually, Pearl Harbor is running a little bit low on supply, even though it's kind of a major base. Um, and I guess, like, from India, places like Madras, which is actually running a little low, to places like Rangoon, which... Um, Rangoon's like the only industry center in Burma. Um, you can also airlift supplies from base to base, but it, that doesn't work too well. I mean, if you think about heavy bombers, you know, some of the better ones could carry maybe 10 tons of bombs. So replace bombs with supplies, and each plane can carry 10 tons of supplies, which is basically a trickle uh, in the grand scheme of things when you're working with, uh, when your goal is to reach a number of like 20,000 supplied, who uh, is mentioned in my previous video to be able to get replacement aircraft. Um, you can also move supply via roads. Um, roads are these kind of dirt paths are like secondary roads. The gray ones are main roads. And then these black lines like here, uh, those are railroads. Uh, secondary roads aren't really a reliable means of keeping a base at full supply. Uh, so a place like Darwin needs some supply shipped so it can stay above that 20,000 point barrier. It's actually getting kind of low here. I think I have a supply convoy on the way to it. Um, but yeah, Darwin's connected to industry centers just by these uh, secondary roads and it's not quite enough. Um, but Palembang is like the only main major supply center on in Sumatra and um, you know neighboring bases like Prabluomith uh, and Osthaven, they're getting supply just fine because they've got railroads and main roads connecting them. Um, I don't know the rates at which supply can move on the different types of roads. Uh, if anybody knows and can point people to the point viewers to the correct page in the manual, um, that would be most helpful. Um, so the next question, how are supplies expended? Well, just about everything you do in the game expends supply in some way. Things like combat, uh, getting replacement squads for your infantry, uh, getting replacement aircraft, uh, flying air missions, rearming ships, expanding bases, and so on. Um, these all expend supplies at different rates. I don't know the rates for sure. Um, the only one that I could really tell from the manual is aircraft. And, um, like, uh... Your basic naval strike uh, will expend one point of supply per plane uh, per mission. Uh, things like combat air patrols is each plane uh, expends a third of a point of supply per mission. Um, and then heavy bombers, depending on their bomb load, might expend more than one point of supply per mission. But uh, little things like that kind of add up, so you need to constantly keep keep bases uh, that base those planes in good shape in terms of supply. Another thing that can expend supply is spoilage. Um, so, like, if a base is small enough, then it won't be able to handle too much supply, you know. Some will get wasted because there's no good place, no good facilities or uh, infrastructure to, um, to store all the supplies. Um, according to the manual, if the port plus airfield size is 10 or above, you don't have to worry about this. And then there's some sort of formula, but generally if you have like a total size of six or seven uh, between port and, uh, port and airfield, you're probably in decent shape unless you're shipping a ton of supplies to it. And then finally, general upkeep. Um, so let's take a look at these units here in Singapore. Um, it says they require 1,866 points of supply per month for this particular division. I'm a little bit below that, but this is generally, this is for its, you know, general operation. That's how much supply it needs. Uh, what happens if you run out of supply? Well, for one, planes have trouble flying. Uh, they get penalized. They don't fly all of the planes available. They might carry reduced loads, uh, things like that. Uh, they also can't be repaired if a base is completely out of supply, um, which is... I, I actually, after running this turn, uh, I won the game, and you can... After you win, you have the opportunity to view your opponent's side. Checked out the Japanese bases and the marshals. Yeah, all of their planes there. Um, all the bases are out of supply, and all the planes are grounded there. Um, also, 
ground units, when they're attacking, they suffer penalties. Uh, when a ground unit's totally out of supply, they fight at 25% effectiveness because they're starving and don't have bullets to shoot. Uh, also, being low on supply decreases morale gradually, so that's, uh, that's also a bad thing for your combat dice rolls. And finally, if they're uh, too low on supply, they have trouble replacing lost squads, and uh, they also have trouble replacing dis er, repairing disabled squads. So, um, a common complaint is, and pardon the music switch while I lose focus on the window and scroll down my outline, common complaint is my supplies aren't, you know, unloading from the ships right. Excuse me. Uh, we then run into something. Here we're running into something called uh, docking limitations. This is a thing um, kind of based on bases rather than supplies itself. You see a port like uh, Surabaya is a large port. It's a size 8 port. And uh, it can dock like 128,000 tons of shipping. And. Uh, you know, you can basically any task force you make, unless it carries a ton of battleships and carriers, uh, any cargo type task force will be able to dock there just fine. Uh, when a task force, when a transportation task force is docked, um, the port gives a bunch of bonuses to loading and unloading supplies. And, you know, if you're in like a level 4, level 5 port, you know, you can unload about 10,000 tons of supply a day once you get to like level. Eight or nine, you're unloading, you know, forty or fifty thousand tons per day, and that's about the total capacity of uh, of your task force. Um, but on smaller ports like Osthaven here, it's this one's a size four port, and it can only handle uh, forty-eight thousand tons of task of ships docked at once. So you need to be a little careful with this one because um, sometimes ships, if you just have them sitting idle in a port. Um, they'll automatically dock and not let other task forces dock. And when a task force isn't docked, it unloads their supplies at a rate of maybe 100 tons a day rather than tens of thousands, which is obviously a bad thing. So, And actually, in this case, uh, Osthaven's too small to dock either of these task forces. So when you're dealing with logistics, you don't want to make, your, uh, you don't want to make gigantic supply convoys because... Uh, for smaller bases, they won't be able to dock and unload at an optimal rate. Um, the main problem I have, um, so I'm using Hilo here in Hawaii as my staging area for um, to gather a bunch of supply here from the west coast and then from there ship it out to the South Pacific and uh, things like that. But I have, and also fuel convoys from Hilo to uh, my old former staging base at Luganville. Um, but a bunch of convoys kind of pile up here and they all get stuck because um, only one of them is docked at a time. And then this air transport task force is just sitting here and it's taking up space. So let's undock it and move it out one hex. That's a good way to uh, avoid you know idle task forces that you kind of want in the area. To not take up spaces, just move them one hex away from the base and kind of try and remember what they do. Uh, so that's the end of my basic logistics video. I'm going to make a subsequent one talking a little bit more about um, what makes a good base, how to build them up, and how, also uh, addressing a question in one of my previous videos, uh, how I keep track of stuff. So stay tuned for that. Um, I'll actually call that part two of this series. So thanks for watching and... Um, See you next time.